So here's a video about how to learn Vim correctly. Uh, there's a lot of opinions about what editor you should learn, how you should learn it, and all this stuff. And I must have done at least 10 videos on Vim at this point. Uh, but I wanted to make one that's recently updated that shows how I believe you can practice learning Vim the right way uh, as quickly as possible using real computers and real Linux as opposed to any number of other pretend things that are out there. Uh, I won't go into why I think using the actual tool is important. It should be obvious. Uh, so how do you do that? Well, the first thing is everything I do on these streams, uh, on, on these videos, is assuming you have Docker installed. So whether you've got Linux installed already and you've got Docker or you've installed Docker on your Windows machine or you've installed Docker on your Mac, it doesn't matter. This is everything that I do now is assuming you have Docker because if you don't have Docker, you are missing out on one of the most powerful opportunities for development. And this is one of these, these side effects of this a benefit uh, from having Docker already on your system. So assuming you've installed Docker, this is all you have to do to set yourself up to practice using Vim. So you can run Docker, run, and you can run any any computer that you want to. If you want to do Arch, you can. Uh, and we're going to do IT to keep it so it's an interactive prompt. Uh, and then we're going to run whatever operating system you want. So if you want a true VI experience, which I suggest you might want to try at some point, um, you might want to try BusyBox, but we're not quite ready for that yet. Um, but what's, if you want to get a standard Vim, uh, then I would suggest using Debian, uh, or, uh, Ubuntu or, uh, Arch Linux, if you want, they're all the same. Uh, they have different package managers or Fedora, right? So the operating system doesn't matter to pick your operating system of your, that you like the, the package manager that you like, I'm going to use Debian and and then just run it. Now, all of these by default will will start up a shell, so you don't have to worry about that. And this downloaded the image, which I already had there, and it started up a, a computer, a container, uh, that is running as root, which is fine. You don't care why, because it's a container. Uh, if you want to use Arch mode, you can use whatever you want. And, but, so it's, here's some of the problems right here. You're gonna go try to run VI, and it's gonna be like, I don't know where VI is. And you're gonna do Vim, it's like, is Vim there? No, how about Nano, is that there? No, how about Emacs, is that there? No. So one of the reasons I like to use containers for this stuff is because it, it gives you practice in how to install every time you do it. Now, you're obviously not going to have to do this every time, uh, but this is what you need to do. So anytime, so if you're using an app system, uh, you're going to say apt uh, install, I'm sorry, apt upgrade, and this is uh, date update. And so after you do the app update, if that succeeds, then do the next thing. It's called short circuit logic apt update and apt install. Uh, now, this is different if you're on Fedora or Arch Linux, obviously, or Suzy or whatever. Uh, apt install uh, Vim. And that will get you everything for Vim. So it said, you want to continue? Yes. So if you install the standard Vim packages, uh, they all include a program called Vim Tutor. And you can run Vim Tutor right there, and you can do Vim Tutor immediately. Okay, Vim Tutor is uh, it's dated. It's 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 it was written by a bunch of college kids that didn't really know how to use Vim. Vim. It's got a lot of problems. Uh, I plan on replacing Vim Tutor with an image, so that you'll be able to do. Uh, stay tuned. It's not not right now, but eventually you'll be able to do uh, Docker run RDBX Rob slash Vim Lab, and it will take you through all the different things you can do with Vim, including. Uh, command line magic integration that is not covered anywhere else. So that's coming. But if you want to just use all the standard stuff that's already there without my custom container, you can go here and follow the steps and do what it says. You don't need to worry about messing your system up or anything because you're on a system that's been developed for you. Don't need to worry about adding a new user and not doing it as root. At some point you want to do that, but for right now you really don't care. You just want to learn Vim. And this thing's going to get thrown away immediately afterwards anyway. Uh, and if you, if you don't want it to be, this one isn't, sorry, if you, and then when you want to come back to it. So let's, when you're like, if you're in the middle of the session, right, you already know about all these things about Docker, but the easiest way, and this is going to be hard for you to remember, but if you do control PQ, that will detach from, from control PQ will detach from your running container and you'll see that it's still there. Happy as a clam. It's like running here. We didn't give it a name. So just remember, note the name. There's Dreamy Herman. And if you want to go back to it, you can just do Docker attach 
uh, Dreamy Hermit or this or whatever. And you can go back in there and you can pick up right where you left off. In fact, you could even be in the middle of editing a file, uh, Vim Tutor, and it will remember. So if you do Control A, whoops, sorry. It might, you might have to get crazy here. Yeah, so it went ahead and, and it, it escaped you. It didn't clear you didn't clear your screen up, so clear your screen. But if you if you want to go back to it again, you can what I said before, uh, attach again, and it's right where you left off. It's still there, still running there in the background. So that's the beauty of Docker. Uh, you can come back to it, work on it anytime you want. You can you can do this entire Vim Tutor thing in the car. You don't have to be logged into some remote system. All those advantages of go. Um, if if, however, uh, you want, the reason I'm going to make my own container for this and don't have it yet, I'll do another video when I do, but is is there is a site that I have, have summarized the absolute bare essentials you need to know. It's called VI Survive. And, and what this is, is just a drop-dead simple introduction to Vim that assumes that you're using the arrow keys when you first start out and there's there's only one reason for that so you don't have to use nano or some other editor uh believe it or not vi is actually or vim when you use a lot of the arrow keys it's actually simpler to use than nano and i it just blows my mind that this was not considered when they made a the decision to make nano the default on so many systems which is, is not the truth in in the container world but um so this is all you need to learn this is something you can print this out and put it on your desk, you know, print it with an actual printer and put it like in your, on a card. Uh, and that's it. You just need to know how to exit, of course, uh, but without saving. And there's many, many, many other ways to do all these fancy things. Uh, instead of escape, you're probably wanting to control left bracket, uh, things like that. But, but just to survive, this is all you need. And then when you need to take it up a notch, you can do that and you can go, uh, the, I, I don't, there's that's I, I don't have a reliable link so i'm not going to mention right now but vi survive will always be there so you can go to vi survive and you can learn to survive and um again vi purists like yell at me and i would have yelled at me for doing the the arrows but the reason that i have the arrows is so for example i have say i was going to edit my vimrc uh i have i have blocked my ability to use arrows because I want to get good and not use zeros. And there's lots of reasons for that, but mostly you don't want to be going like this all the time, all day. You just want to like stay focused. Um, if you want to get rid of those arrows, by the way, um, uh, here's the arrow keys, and I'll go ahead and send this for fun to you. You can add this to your VimRC if you're, in, you're probably a beginner, so you don't need that. Going through your VimRC and customizing Vim is a different video. Right now you're just trying to get good enough so you can even edit anything. So just stick with Survive and pull the container down. Uh, but for the rest of you, if you would like, um, here is here is how to lock down your your arrow keys. So if you're a more advanced user and you want to lock that down, you can go, you can go take care of that. Um, so yeah, uh, it's going to be really which one syntax error? Oh, I have a syntax error. Apparently, oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> um, this looks like my eek tool has got a problem. Anyway, so this has been a video about how to get going with VI. Uh, it, there are lots of other things out there. I've decided to not even mention any of them. Uh, the most, the best possible way for you to use Vim is to use Vim. <laughs> so do it. You know, oh, it's a stop container. Let's go start it back up. Stop. This is not, nobody needs panic here. Uh, and now we can reattach Dreamy Herman, uh, Suicide Vim. <laughs> Uh, what nukes the system when you touch arrow keys? Uh, blocking, uh, blocking arrow keys. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna block those arrow keys, uh, if you if you wanna block the arrow keys, you can go, um, you can go look at my vmrc. So that's all in my dot files. Uh, you can go l read through there. Uh, look for the stuff that has vim in it. And I was talking about vmrc. Uh, when you do lose, when you learn vim, stick with. There's a couple complaints as you go through, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna improve this. this. Is why I'm gonna make my own container. I've long been uh, frustrated by the fact that Vim Tutor teaches you Vim isms that don't work that don't work in VI, which VI is the editor that came before Vim, uh, and that's not a problem normally unless you get on a tiny little container like BusyBox that only comes with VI. It doesn't come with Vim, or you get on you know BSD a system that doesn't come with Vim and comes with VI, um, and you, that can can trip you up. You know things like you, that you think are fine or that are taught in the Vim Tutor are wrong and they won't work. 
Now, that's fine if you've got Vim, but but I don't I don't think you should become dependent on Vim until you've learned the other way first. And then if you want to do that, that's fine. But you know, you at least know that you're making a choice to use something that you can't use on another computer, as opposed to not knowing and being surprised and when it's a very, you know, inopportune time and you're like stuck and you can't edit anything. So so I am making uh, two containers that train you in how to use just VI. And by the way, if you want to do that, um, there is no tutor for it. Uh, there is no high school point. There, 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 there is no uh, tutoring for it. Uh, the JK Man of Vim exclusive. No, it's not. Mm-mm. No. And and by the way, if you want to know, <laughs> if oh the join the capital join, if you if you want to know how to do, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Um, uh, please. Oh, okay, but don't unblock the use of the arrow keys. Uh, main learning be so much easier. Uh, oh, hopefully, yeah, that will help you. Um, so one of the things that I was going to tell you, um, how can I quickly jump to the end of the line and, and edit mode in Vim? Uh, there's lots of ways. My favorite is capital A because I'm usually adding something to the end of the line. So, you know, uh, temp foo. And so usually I want to add something to the end of the line. I'm capital A is my favorite. You notice down here I'm doing a lot of control left bracket. That's because control left bracket is what is easier for me to, to hit than escape. I do have my caps lock mapped to escape, which I'll do in another video. Uh, I don't. I, I used to be against that. I, I think that's totally fine now. But yeah, so control A is the best. If you if you just want to go to the end, it's a dollar sign. But that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't insert anything. By the way, some of these things that I just told you are not covered in the Vim Tutor. So start with the Vim Tutor. Don't be frustrated. Know this stuff's going to come in addition to it. And I um and I'll get you guys a container that that teaches you uh, everything uh, about Vim slowly. If if you are a purist and you do not want to learn anything except for VI, there is no tutor for VI. I mean, then you might want to do something different. You might want to try a container. So let's make a new container. So Docker run it. Uh, I'm going to run. You can either run a BusyBox container, okay, which which comes with uh, BusyBox comes with only VI. So there is no VI Vim. There's 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 VI and that's it. Uh, and there's no Vim tutor. So Vim VI. There's no Vim tutor. There's no tutor at all. <laughs> so if you want if you want to edit files, which by the way. Uh, I, this is when I realized that uh, that uh, arrow keys are actually supported by VI now. They weren't before, uh, but they are. They're supported by VI. So you still need to disable them if you want to do that. Uh, all of that I'll put in the in the in the tutor container at some point. So stay tuned on that. But if you want to learn that, you can do that. Uh, another way to test without getting a container at all is to install. Uh, so let's do another one. Um, let's run. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, run it. Let's do. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's do Debian. Debian again. We'll do Debian. Uh, and this time, let's give it a name. We'll call it um, NVI. And oops, did I do it wrong? Oh, I always forget. I think this has to go first, right? Uh, Debian. Yeah, there we go. So, so now we have to do this apt install, apt update, and apt install NVI. So NVI is is another pure VI. This is the VI that comes on BSD Unix. Uh, if you know about that, and and it. Uh, it's got lots of old. It's it's bug for bug exactly compatible with the original VI. Uh, so temp blah or whatever. But again, there's no. But see, so this one, this I mean, this is how I this is how I, this I use NVI all the time. Not NeoVim, by the way. I, I I cannot stress enough not to start with NeoVim. If you want to use NeoVim later on, fine. Just I hate it, but don't use it first. Okay. NeoVim can really mess you up because it's got a lot of stuff in it that is not supported across the board. So, um, you know, just know that. Uh, so this is this is NVI. I don't think NVI puts uh, 
because uh, there isn't it's not it's not vi tutor there's no such thing as vi tutor which is why i need to make one because there isn't one <laughs> it's kind of annoying uh there's nothing to train you in vi and then you know in kind of a multi-staged way teach you layer you know do an overlay of vim skills on top of that and then do an overlay uh man vi is the tutor <laughs> Uh, there's not even man on here. I think I have to install the docs. Uh, is that bad if I haven't started with VI? No, I think it's fine. Most people do that skill point. Uh, people start out with Vim because that's what's on the system. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna argue that that I believe there's a better way to learn. I think you should learn VI first, and then layer on Vim on top of that. And then that way, if you encounter a a, a V uh, system, as Orchenheimer called it when he first encountered it. Uh, I love Zorchin Harvest, one of my favorite streamers, and he uh, was forced to use VI at work. And there are some phenomenally awesome streams of him having used Vim his whole life and never knowing that it was even a VI. He called it V. <laughs> and and he was he did not know what to do. It was kind of fun to watch because he did not know v, v. He did not know VI. He only learned Vim. And and it was uh it was it was really funny. So so for that reason. Uh, I suggest learning uh, VI first, but there's nothing out there. But stay tuned, I'll get you guys a container that does that. That's one of the most important skills to learn, hands down, if not the most important skill, is how to use the VI editor on any system because it's most likely going to be the editor on the system besides Ed, and we could have a fun talk about that.